This is the 88 automotive meter in the 5 Series. 5 Series made some changes from 3 Series. Uh, noteworthy would be the rotational knob, the buttons, what they, what they mean and different points and so forth. The bottom is the same. We've got RPMs, volts, ohms, temperature, diode test for the red lead, the red jack, the black jack for common or ground as we call it in the automotive world. And of course, the 400 milliamp and the 10, 10 amp fused ammeter functions. Also uh, noted, it's not only a CAT 3000 voltmeter like the Fluke 87 3 series, it's also rated CAT 4 600 volts. Now what those ratings mean is the type of environment you can be working in in the high voltage world safely. Category 3 would be like in a breaker box, a distribution panel, uh, high voltage uh, uh, AC circuits in, in lighting and so forth. Category 4 would be like the meter box or underground utility, so a little bit closer to the source of the power itself. You've got to make sure if you're working on a hybrid vehicle that you have a category 3 1000 volt meter to be safe. Um, the next thing we'll talk about is what has changed with some of the 5 series functions and that is the rotary knob. If we go to AC voltage, you also see it has double duty in yellow RPMs 1 and 2. Now the 1 and 2 would be whether it is a, a single ignition event per two revolutions or two ignition events in two revolutions such as a, uh, a, a two cycle engine or what you'll be more commonly running into would be a DIS system where we fire uh, a coil every cylinder rotation or every crank rotation I should say instead of every other crank rotation. Um, to get it into the RPM mode you'll be using of course the the inductive clamp that goes around the plug wire, the secondary ignition wire in these two jacks right here where that goes and then you will hit the yellow button. So unlike the 3 series it had the blue button to get the multi-function functionality of the rotary switch. It's got a yellow button so when you're in RPM uh, 1 or 2, or if you want, I should say you want to toggle whether you're in AC volts or DC volts, if you want to toggle between RPM 1 and 2 making this effectively a tachometer, you simply hit the button for it's yellow and you see it says RPM 1, RPM 2, back and forth and back and back to either DC volts or AC volts, whichever you've got it on. So the yellow button gives you what it says in the yellow ink on the, on the faceplate of the tester uh, the multi-functions, RPM 1 and 2, DIS or non-DIS basically. Same thing, we turn this up to millivolt DC, we can also toggle into temperature and when we go to temperature it defaults to Fahrenheit. If you want to see Celsius, a little multi-function button up here above the word range and we go to Celsius. So back toggling back and forth Celsius, Fahrenheit and then back to millivolts by hitting the function shift button, the yellow button and now we're back to millivolts DC. The same thing is true for uh, continuity test slash ohms with the omega symbol and then in yellow the capacitance, we're testing a capacitance of a circuit. Hit the yellow button and now it says nanofarads, NF. And then we turn it to milliamps or microamps, whichever you want to do, milliamps or microamps, if you leave it without pressing any buttons, it's in DC mode. In white, it is, it's the DC symbol. But if you hit the function shift button, the yellow button, that gets you the yellow symbol there, which is the sinusoidal uh, symbol or sine wave, meaning AC. Now we're measuring AC amperage, milliamps, or AC microamps. Get it back to DC microamps, hit that function button again, AC to DC. That's how we toggle back and forth if we're measuring amperage in series with a circuit if it's a DC circuit or an AC circuit, whichever we're looking at. Well that's the rotary switch on the Fluke 88 5 series. Let's take a look at the buttons. Now, once again we've got the backlight button, which the backlight's on at the moment. We can turn it off, but it also has two settings. We have a low, we have a high. Now, underneath the backlight button, there is the word high res one second. Now, what that means is you can get higher resolution metering out of the meter by holding the button down one second. And when you do that, hold it down one second, do it again, one second, and release. And it says 
high res in the bottom of the right hand corner of the screen. Now, let's go ahead and turn it to ohms or capacitance check if we're using the function button. Or in this case, the little continuity symbol. If I want to turn off the beep, I don't want to bother anybody with that high pitch frequency noise, I can turn the beep off and on manually with this button, the symbol of the beep. Now, if I've got on the, the rotary switch, we'll say on DC volts, and I'm doing a min max, we'll say I'm looking for some loose connection, and I'm looking to see if I have a voltage drop as I wiggle a wire, I want to catch the minimum and maximum to record what's going on. If I have it in min max mode, let's go ahead and put it in recording mode to record the min max, and I hit this button that says trigger underneath here, so it now becomes a second function of the button besides the continuity beeper symbol. Now I hit the button that says trigger, and now I've just sent the meter into a higher resolution mode. At 250, you see that it says the word peak right here in the upper left hand corner. So now at 250 microseconds of capture time. Yeah. So we're capturing data quicker. So if you want more resolution for your min max sample rate, you turn it to volts, ohms, whatever you're doing, a min max, amps even for that matter, you're checking the min, minimum and maximum of the most or least amount that we've seen as we record, you go ahead, we can turn it off and back on again, get it back to where it was. Now we'll go ahead and hit min max, we're recording, and now push that button that has a second function in your, when you're in the min max mode, and it's called the trigger, and we will actually have quicker updates from 250 microseconds peak to the normal 100 milliseconds of update of min-max recording. Now let's go ahead and move our functions over again to relative delta. As we mentioned with the Fluke 87 3 series, the relative button or the relative delta button, the little delta triangle symbol right here, we can press that and that will show us a change. So if the voltage has went from 12 and a half to 14 and a half as you wiggled that uh, alternator output connection and you made a good connection and started charging, you wouldn't see if you had it in voltage, for example, voltage DC, and you were measuring and you went into this relative delta, you wouldn't see 12.5 or 14.5, you'd see the two volts it increased as you wiggle that connection. And as I mentioned with the 87, it's also when you have it on ohms and you want to hook your red and black leads together and zero the meter, this button has that function to zero the meter. To make it show from, let's say, 0.1 or 0.2 ohms, which is the resistance of the leads hooked together, to 0, 0.0. Then when you hook the leads into the circuit on the car, now you're actually seeing truly, exactly, what the resistance is of that circuit you're measuring. And moving over to the right, hertz or percentage. Uh, that would be our duty cycle percentage, or the, uh, go ahead and turn it, let's say, to voltage. And we hit it once and you'll see it says HZ times per second, hertz. We hit it again, now it's in percentage in the duty cycle of a pulse width modulated circuit. And then starting back up at the top again, top left corner, we talked about the yellow button already, and that is our function. So if you see anything in yellow on the rotary dial, we are going from what is in the white to what's in the yellow. So RPMs, when we hit the yellow button, temperature, hit the yellow button, we have it here, capacitance check, AC amps, microamps, and, and milliamps if you hit the yellow button. So a little review of that. Uh, min max, we've talked about that already. Recording, whether you have uh, the peak low, the peak highs, and the average when you hit that button. So if we went into min max, you see it says min max, and then there's our max, and then there's our, our minimum. And to range, now interestingly enough, the 87.3 series, when you um, put the meter, you first turn the meter on, we'll get a backlight here, it's going to be in auto ranging by default. Now the 5 series, it appears that they have a different default. They're in a manual range. As a matter of fact, it says right here, manual. Now, if we want to change from manual to auto range, we have to hold a button down as we turn the meter on. Now, that button 
is the little backlight button. So let's turn the meter off and watch what happens when I hold the backlight button down and turn it to DC volts again. The word auto, as I hold the button down, as I rotate it to DC volts, the auto pops up. When I release it, look at the scaling. Instead of saying manual down here at the bottom, it says auto. It's an auto ranging scale. That is one of the most important things to remember about this 5 series meters. When you turn that knob on, you're in a particular mode, a particular range, kind of like a particular gear on a car, and it's going to read a particular range of voltage. Now, other functions that you can enable while holding a button down and turning the meter on would be the yellow function button. So it gives us multiple functions as we go around the clock here looking at the, at the uh, rotary switch, but if we push it down and hold it down and then turn the meter on, we'll see the display come up and say P off. And what that means is power off. It doesn't mean it's going to power it off. It means it's not going to go into the auto power off or auto shutdown. So when I release this, now if I walk away from the car for 30 minutes and I come back, the meter hasn't automatically shut down to prevent battery run down. It's going to stay powered up. So the auto power down function has been uh, removed temporarily when you hold that button down and turn it on. Other functions of holding a, button, holding a button down and turning the meter on would be if I wanted to calibrate the meter, which requires special uh, procedures and equipment, I would hold down the min max button and turn the meter on. We're not going to do that. We're not going to try and calibrate this meter. Uh, the range button, if I want to have a smoothing feature. You ever watched a meter when you're looking at something that's changing, a voltage is changing a lot? Uh, and it just makes the meter so busy it's kind of hard to read. You, you should just kind of slow down as it updates. Well, you can press the range button and then turn it on. We'll say DC volts. And before you release the range button, you're holding the button down and turning it on. It says S, short for smoothing. Release that. Now I'm going to have a smoother meter operation. It's going to update a little slower, be a little easier to read. Another one you'd have, if you want to check all the segments, let's say you suspect maybe the older meter and the LCD display could have a, a section that's not lighting up and that's why you, you think you're getting some bad readings or whatever, you want to check all the displays or you're just curious what all things can light up on this display, then what you want to do is hold the auto hold button down and turn the meter on and as you turn it to the first notch and you hold that auto hold button down, every display segment that this meter can show is lit up. And if you want to turn the beeper off, you hold the beeper button down for the continuity beep symbol there. Hold that down, turn it on, and now the meter says beep. It's in stealth mode. It won't make a beep. You're not going to bother anybody. I'm not sure what kind of situation that'd be in, but if you didn't want the beep meter to make a beep, you could hold that button down and turn it on. So there's some of the minor functions and overview of how the Fluke 88 5 Series works.